Anthony Polina, Washington County Senator, and I've introduced bill, Senate Bill 266. What the bill would do is really quite simple and important. It would phase out the use of neonicotinoid seeds in Vermont. These are treated seeds that farmers use, particularly for corn. It would phase them out over two years, and it would also require the Department of Agriculture to do the research and make sure that we have alternatives to the neonicotinoid treated seeds as well. You know, the thing is, these are systemic, systemic insecticides. They go throughout the whole plant, and they have a particularly nasty effect on bees and pollinators, and it's really, obviously, our food supply relies on bees and other pollinators. So I think it's really important to keep in mind that these neonicotinoids are actually used indiscriminately. It's not as if the farmer says, gee, I need to like, go get some neonicotinoid treated seeds because I'm having a problem with pests in my, in my fields. Basically, all the seeds that are sold in Vermont these days are neonicotinoid treated seeds, unless you make an effort to try to find some that are not. And what that tells us is that we've become addicted to these kinds of things. It's like we're told in the committee, opponents of this kind of ban would say, well, we can't ban these neonicotinoid treated seeds because there's no alternative. So it tells us that the seed companies have decided that all the seeds should be treated with chemicals and insecticides, which, you know, turns our environment into a cancer risk. And, but the, the lack of alternatives is really troubling. We've also found that in Quebec, just north of here, actually in Ontario and now in, also in Quebec, in Canada, they've banned neonicotinoid treated seeds unless farmers can make the case that they really need to use them. So there are alternatives out there. It is important that we move away from pesticides and insecticides as much as possible, particularly those that are systemic and those that are used indiscriminately, whether they're needed or not. So I would, having said that, I would say this bill is not, not a done deal by any means. There's a lot of opposition to it. Some of the opposition comes from those people who say there are no alternatives. So it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we have alternatives to these kinds of seeds. So I try to remind people that nature works. And the idea that the chemical companies are able to treat all these seeds and then market them as if there's no alternatives just shows you how inherently evil the industry can be. So let's all get together and do our best to ban neonicotinoid treated seeds. Hello, everybody. We're from the Mobilization for Pollinator Survival. Welcome to our press conference. Representative Chip Troiano from Caledonia 2 is going to speak about the bill that he introduced and talk about uh, the, just the, in general, the legislation to protect pollinators. Let's hear it for Chip Troiano. Hi, thanks uh, everyone for being here. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. And I have to tell this story every time I speak about this. It is uh, Emily and Arrow who are responsible for uh, getting our pollinator protection bill through last year, uh, passed out of uh, every, uh, every committee, and both houses unanimously. Now, and if you've been around this place a little while, you can understand or appreciate how uh, great that was. So we were really uh, clapping our hands. So um, this year, um, I was asked to pick up on a piece that was eliminated from the bill um, two years ago on treated seeds, um, about 95 percent of our um, co uh, feed corn and soybean seeds are treated with uh, up to six different substances and neonicotinoids uh, being one of them. So um, this year <laughs> um, I was asked to draft another bill um, to um, ask farmers to present some evidence to the Agency of Agriculture that treated seeds are necessary to protect their crops. Um, uh, I introduced it in, in the House and it's uh, labeled uh, H739. <laughs> and so um, I kind of did it with the notion that I knew that Senator Polina was, had been a longtime member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, um, and that if this bill had a, a, a really good chance, it would probably come from the Senate side. And that's pretty much what's happening right now. As an update, uh, House Ag Committee has decided to kind of wait to see what the Senate side did. Um, we had a joint hearing not too long ago <clears throat> that uh, presented some evidence from the Agency of Agriculture that groundwater and subgroundwater were not impacted by um, pollen or, or, or runoff from treated seeds. Um, it, it was received by some of us, including myself, um, as uh, not particularly 
reliable, I guess I would say. Um, so uh, we would, uh, I guess the Senate side went a little bit further and they took some more evidence uh, on this particular piece on groundwater um, as it relates to treated seeds that are planted regularly uh, by, as corn, uh, as uh, corn, uh, feed corn uh, for our, our, uh, our cattle. So the Senate side is moving it along. I'm very happy that it is. Um, and if it <laughs> gets out of the Senate, um, and um, into the House, um, I should be able to garner some support uh, for that. Last year, uh, we had uh, 67 co-signers for the Pollinator Bill, and this year, actually, I had more than I had, to, that I had thought I had. Uh, there were probably about 40 co-signers here. I've been talking about this for three years now in the, in the House. Um, members of the House have a pretty good idea of where we're going with this, um, and I think if this bill comes out of the Senate, uh, we would, uh, we'll be able to, um, I will be able to help uh, shepherd it through uh, the House side uh, and um, uh, get it to the governor's desk again. So I appreciate everyone for being here. I appreciate Emily and Arrow for all the work they do and everyone here uh, with the, holding the signs and dress like bees. There was a proviso that I don't dress like bees. So, uh, uh, so I'm in the suit and they're in bees, uh, bee costumes. So uh, thanks all for being here and uh, um, I'm, I'll continue to work on this. And if it takes to next year to do it, I'll stay with it and we'll get this thing through. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hi, my name is Maya. Um, I live in Walden on Four Directions Farm and we moved, my family moved there about four months ago. I heard yesterday that we could come and give a little talk about maybe why I think pollinators, we need to help pollinators. So I was like, yeah, I'm definitely coming. <laughs> so as a 16 year old homeschooled kid just moved to Vermont um, living on our farm where I plan to someday raise my children you know eating what we grow and building a sustainable permaculture haven where we have fruit trees and gardens and edible perennials um, if all the pollinators are gonna be dead in 20 years because we poisoned them like I can't can't have that dream and it's a dream I know is possible because I lived on a farm like that in Washington State, but it was getting too crowded and polluted there, so now we've come to Vermont. And it seems so obvious to me, as I'm sure it is to you, that without pollinators, we as a species would probably survive with our amazing technology, but many animals and plants would not. I'm no financial expert, but if Vermont acts now, helping lead the way to saving our pollinators, it will be a whole lot cheaper than artificially pollinating all of our crops and a much more humane option than letting all these important organisms perish at our hands. Humans have a unique gift uh, to feel the suffering of other species and they can take action to alleviate it. And you would think, especially since pollinator suffering is going to affect us as well, this would be a time to take a step and do what we can for the common good, not just of these wonderful green mountains, but also for the world. So thank you. I'm a beekeeper. I've been keeping bees for about 28 years now here in Vermont. And I can tell you it's never been harder to keep bees alive than it is today. Um, bees are the canary in the cornfield. They're telling us that we've got to change the way we're doing things when it comes to pesticides. Uh, luckily, in a sense, the honeybees, as you can see, are doing fairly well because we have an army of people out there caring for the honeybees. We don't have people out there caring for the native pollinators, and they're getting decimated, okay? So it's a serious issue, um, not only for pollinators, but for climate change and dealing with the climate issue, which is also a threat to pollinators as well as ourselves. 
because when the soils get saturated with these toxic poisons, it kills the soil organisms and then the plants can't sequester the carbon as effectively as they need to, as what we need to, as we need to harness the power of agriculture to deal with climate. And to do that, we've got to phase out the use of pesticides. That was one of the recommendations from the Pollinator Protection Committee, is to phase out the use of pesticides. And that has, to, it's gonna have to happen if we're going to have the kind of rosy future that I'm sure uh, the young people uh, and the bees are hoping for. So I wanna really thank Chip and all the legislators that have been uh, supporting and working on this bill. You know, Vermont farmers, they're resilient, they're in, in very, in, um, in inventive and innovative, and they can figure out how to grow our food without having to spread hundreds of tons of poisons throughout the landscape year after year after year. I know they can do it, they just need support. They need support from the legislature, they need support from the governor's office, because right now the system we have supports them using all these toxins. You know, you can't go and get a loan from a bank without giving them your, your business plan showing you're gonna use the, the, tox, the pesticides, because if you're not gonna use the pesticides, they're probably not gonna give you the loan. You can't get federal uh, uh, funds to help you if you get crop losses if you're not using the pesticides. Uh, they don't even teach non-use of pesticides in our ag schools. So the whole system is designed around the pesticides, and we've gotta dismantle that and start giving better incentives and support to farmers to do what we know needs to be done. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. I'm the chair of the House Natural Resources Fish and Wildlife Committee. Um, and I've been following and um, following up on the Pollinator Commission report that Ross just mentioned. Um, and it's just fabulous to be surrounded in the State House by folks who aren't here all the time. Um, usually I say dogs and kids, but it's great to be surrounded by bees and kids today. <laughs> um, so thank you all for coming. Um, I just want to point out that as Chair of, of Fish and Wildlife, we've just took, taken testimony from the um, in our committee about the four species of bumblebees that are now listed in Vermont, the natives that Ross mentioned. Um, knowing this, you know, we need to recognize that the wholesale use of pesticides that are not targeted to particular diseases or pests, it's no longer acceptable. Um, our species are going extinct and we need to pay attention. So I just say I support this bill and that um, it's a great next step toward protecting our bees and other pollinators upon which we all depend. Stop planting poison seeds. Support S266. Stop planting poison seeds. Support S266. Okay. Pollinators need protection from harmful human intervention. They are essential to our survival. We can be their partners, not their rivals. If not for them, there is no doubt we would have to do without. We would have to let go of the foods we need and love. Pollinator, pollinator, pollinator. It is your nature to fly about from flower to flower, day after day, hour after hour. Busy bees, butterflies, birds, and bats, let's protect their habitats. Bats, butterflies, birds, and bees, pollinators, pollinators,
Yes. Hi, my name is Stephen Leslie. I'm a small dairy farmer and cheese maker from Heartland, Vermont. And um, I support S266 because I am an advocate for healthy soils. And the evidence is suggesting that the neonics are not only um, poisonous to the pollinators, but are also destructive to soil microbiology. And we really need to start caretaking for our, our soils as the fundamental infrastructure of human society and indeed all ter terrestrial life. So as, as a farmer and advocate for soils, I heartily support Anthony Polina in this effort to get this bill passed. Thank you. My name is David Zuckerman. I'm a farmer as well as Lieutenant Governor of Vermont. And I think S-266 brings a really good direction to policy around neonicotinoids and the fact that they're not even necessary in Vermont relative to the pest pressures. And it also gives time for alternative varieties to be found or seeds to be found that don't have the neonic uh, coating put on those corn seeds. So I hope the legislation will move forward and the administration and the Agency of Agriculture will do their job to support our farmers in finding seeds that work for Vermont and protect our pollinators and our broader uh, biosphere and diversity.